Hello everyone, Avid Assistant here, and um, I've had a couple of comments lately, both on Facebook and on the YouTube channel, on um, what's the best way to make an ID board in um, Avid Media Composer, and specifically what was the method that I was using where I was inputting the data in the bin and it was just updating the ID board. So um, I thought I would show that here um, and I'll make a quick ID board for a broadcast project that I did earlier this year. We'll make it from scratch and uh, then you'll be able to use that in your project. So let's get started. So first off, if you're not familiar by ID boards, countdown leader, you know, these terminology, this is what I mean here. <clears throat> this is the 10 second ID board that I have here for uh, this particular project when I did turnovers for it earlier in May. Um, so we've got episode details of what this is. The, it was called AMA. It was a TV special for TVNZ. You know, that is on my IMDb, so that much I am allowed to say. Um, it was a lot cut and uh, there was the date and uh, the duration um, minus, you know, credits and comms. Um, was 22 minutes, 33 seconds, and four frames. And you can see up in my bin here, I have a number of columns that display that exact information. And if I was to, say, update one of these columns, say if I changed, um, you know, the, the version to director cut, right? And then I'll, I'll just refresh my time code generator here by jumping forward a little bit. You can see my ID board has updated to reflect director cut. So there's all of our episode details. We'll always always have the title of the feature film or the episode or whatever it is that we're working on up the top as well. And we also have a countdown. Um, this is generally either from 10 seconds or from 30 seconds, depending on what you're delivering, what the specs are, what exactly it needs to be. And you'll almost always have a pip of tone right on to. So that's our full ID board and countdown leader there. Uh, the reason I use this method of um, using the timecode generator and I can update it in the bin is so that I can slap this on right at the very beginning. I usually have this on from the assembly stage. And then just before I do an export each time, I'll just update the details quickly in the bin and then I can export. Um, I don't have to enter, you know, title or plus or subcap or rearrange formatting here or manually type in, you know, in, in those finicky plugins. Um, to update my uh, ID board, I can just update the details in the bin and then also have those details in the bin to refer to as well. So let's uh, remove all of this from the timeline and we'll rebuild it from scratch. So I'm gonna remove the subcap and timecode generator layers here. And then what you'll notice underneath is this is just hard baked media, this, um, this countdown, this clock. So I've made this externally um, in an app called Motion. Um, it is like After Effects Lite made by Apple. It's sort of um, as part of the Final Cut suite. Um, and I've made, you know, a form of this for each of the different major frame rates. And I can just in ingest them and use them for that. And this is also a downloadable for any of the Patreon subscribers, by the way, um, where they can download this clock and leader um, and a bin that already has all these columns formatted. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I think we will make everything completely within Avid. So... Let's do that. So in that case, we're going to make a really, really simple clock where we're essentially just going to display a large digit number for each second that we're at and change that number once per second. So to do that, I'm probably gonna use subcap or timecode generator since they'll work perfectly fine here. So I'll open up effect editor, go to generator and we'll use subcap. So I'll drag that down. But before I do, I'm just going to mark the area that I need. So put marks at the start here at 5950 because I'm going to do it for 10 seconds. And then at 5801, I'll put a mark out and I'll drag my sub, sub cap there. Then if I go to edit that, I'll just add a 10. I'll position it over here, make it much larger say like that. Uh, you can change you know, the, the font and the formatting of this at your own will. Um, that'll do for now for the purposes of what we're doing here, I think. And then what I'm going to do is just jump forward one second each time and add an edit here. Um, and then I'll update the number on each one. This is, this is the really simple way to do it that I haven't really done since film school, but you know, it works. So plus one. Edit plus one, 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 
edit plus one edit sweet there we go nice and simple now just need to jump into each one and we'll update eight Right, nice and simple. That took all of about, you know, 20, 30 seconds tops. And we have our countdown. Um, as for our tone, here on this timeline, I have turnover stems. Um, so the, the, this has been baked into it from the, the tidied up timeline that I've made. But I've demonstrated in a few videos how to make tone. Essentially, all we need to do is go to tools and bring up our audio tool. Um, and then inside our audio tool, um, just click up on the pH here and go create tone media. Inside there, you can set your tone level, um, how, how long you want it to be in seconds, um, how many tracks you want, you know, what bin you want it to go to. So I'm using a temp bin just now. I'll get it to go there. Um, Falcon Bay is my rate. Uh, total media and length, really, we don't need 60 seconds. We only need a frame, but I'll just leave it at that for, for the sake of it. And I might change this to minus 18. And OK. And there we go. We have tone. Load that in source. And you can see, perfectly good tone. Um, so all you would have to do is mark in and out on one frame and paste that in. And I'm not going to do it on this timeline um, since um, I already have perfectly good stems, which you can see already have tone at just the right moment. So I'm going to leave this off since I've only got stereo tracks here as well. Uh, but that would be how you would load in your tone for your 2-pip. Right, so now we've got our countdown and we've got our 2-pip, and we're going to need um, all our episode info here. Um, so to make this a little easier, I'm going to change this to so single monitor here. And then when you go to start adding your information, your text here, you have to decide um, you know, what your categories are going to be, what, what information do you actually want to show. Um, so if this was a series, you might want to show episode number. Um, if it's for high-end delivery, you might want to show audio track layout. The categories I'm going to use for this particular demonstration um, are going to be uh, details on the program. Um, so the title of the program, this uh, this was a TV special, so it was a, a one-off, there, there's no episode title. Um, so it's just going to be have the title of the piece, which was AMA. Um, so the same as a feature film or something like that. Then we'll be showing a version number of the sequence, um, a date, um, of when you're exporting and a runtime. Since th those are probably the, the most common ones that I'll put on every export um, for viewing copies. So when I'm showing a director's cuts and assemblies and all that kind of thing during the edit, every time I'll, I'll make an export to send to anyone, whether it be execs or whether it be the director if they're working remote, they'll always want an ID board on there. I think it, you know the countdown just sort of sets the mood before you watch it and it shows all the pertinent information that, you know, um, that they're going to need going in. So let's start building our text. So I'm going to select V2 here and I'm going to mark the same region that I did before and I'm going to drop subcap on once again and this time I will be making different text smaller over here. So going off of those same categories that we just talked about before, um, I'll call one program title um, uh, duration and let's see, and update. So I'll move this over here. Um, I'm going to want these right aligned since I like them to have them here and then my information on the right. Um, so we need to make some text tweaks once again. So, uh, we'll, um, so we'll come up here. I'll make my text a bit bigger. That should do. Uh, I'll go right align and I'll put it about here. I want it sort of as close to the left as I can to give myself space to put information on the right. Um, and this is why I like my countdown leader sort of as much over to the left as, as I can be without it looking out of place. When I was an assistant and I was on a long form project, I'd kind of make a, a custom one of these um, for each project that I was on right at the start. And then I could just update it as I went along. Right, so that's us got our categories um, and it's now time to add our information. So I'm just going to mark V2 so I get the same duration again. And this time when I go to Effect Editor, I'm going to drag on the time code generator. Um, but I'm not going to configure it just yet. I'm going to just park it for now. In fact, I'll just turn off 
um, that time code generator there. In order to get our information here, we're going to have to add some bin columns here um, in our bin. So as I demonstrated earlier, this information is actually already here um, with ep number and title, version, date, and runtime. Now to, to make these, all you have to do is right click up here um, where any of the columns are and you go add custom column. You can add a column, call it anything you like. So you could call one of them, um, you know, edit version. And just as it's different from version that I've got there. For the sake of simplicity just now, we'll type in version 001. The joy of this method is you can configure it however you like and you can update it there however you like. And then you also see the, the version number of your timeline here in the bin and it will be updated in your ID board. And you're just attaching more metadata to it. So I'll hide my old version here now that we've demonstrated that and we'll use this one. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not going to create all these other ones again. We'll just use these ones so now that you know how, how they were created. Um, but we'll update these here. So you can see here that it is the 4th of September um, and the day of recording here. So I'll update this to the 4th of the 9th. Um, and the runtime is very easy to calculate. Um, I'll just put this back to show dual monitor for a second. And then I'm going to have to black out this record monitor here since I can't show you anything from the show. Since it hasn't broadcast yet. Um, and I'll just do a mark in at zero one. And then at the final frame, do a mark out there. And we can see here, and you can see up here, we come up with a duration of 22 minutes, 41 seconds and four frames. Now that is inclusive of two com breaks throughout the, se the sequence, uh, each of which were four seconds in duration. So we can minus eight seconds um, from this duration uh, to get what I will put in my ID board. Since I don't like to include um, the durations of the com breaks or the credits, um, and until that's um, sorted later on and online of the exact durations of them, I'm just talking about the duration of my edit. So that's how you can see that I came up to a runtime here of 0 hours, 22 minutes, 33 seconds and 4 frames, which is that minus 8 seconds. Um, I also just like this format of in recording the runtime is sort of um, unbiased and and you know a bit more clear. I like to show to the exact frame, but without just using colons and, and digits and dashes. Um, this way, we're getting minutes, seconds, frames. You know, because your edits can be shown to all kinds of different people that have varying degrees of experience with viewing, um, you know, work in progress edits. So trying to account for everyone, just make it simpler to read. Um, and we can put any kind of uh, alphanumeric text in these fields anyway, so we can configure it however we like. And I've called the column runtime um, since duration is already taken by Avid. So now that we have our four fields filled out here, runtime, date, edit version, and ep number and title, let's add it into our ID board. So I'll open up the time code generator here. And uh, this uh, first one up here, ironically, it's the bottom uh, one there, which is very weird to look at, but ho 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 So I'll put this back to a single monitor. Um, and I'll put that up there. I'll just uh, check what um, font size I made the categories here. So they are 60. So I'll make this also 60 to match. All right. And just line that up next to it. Can be a little finicky to set up the first time, but then once you have to set up, you don't have to tinker with it again. And now that I've got that there, um, instead of reading time code, I'm just going to tell it to read a sequence bin column. By default, it's going to read name, so and I've called this uh, the sequence broadcast turnover. But we can change this to read any bin column whatsoever, including one that we've created with this drop down menu here. So I'll open this up here and we scroll down. And you're looking for one called custom property. So I'll click on that. And then you have to type in exactly what you called your column in the bin. So our bin column is called epno and title. So I'm going to put that exactly like that in here. Epno and title. 
And then as soon as we finish typing that in, the information from the bin column pops up. And that's our first entry on our ID board configured on the timeline. So now all we have to do is add the rest of our entry points from our timecode generator to the right positions and update their displays. So I'm going to go through and do that now. And one more. And boom, there we go. So that is me filled out my custom property for each one. Runtime, date, edit version, and Epno on title. And you can see here that we have all of our information has been added in correctly, roughly formatted and lined up. And if I play that down, we have a countdown of 10 seconds and all the information relevant to our particular episode or feature film or timeline, whatever it is. And we have a two pip um, of tone on two seconds to go right at the end. So there we go um, to the few people who asked. That is my method for making an ID board um, and countdown. Um, and once I have that made, that will be put on my um, assembly timeline and it will just stay on the timeline for the remainder of the edit until it's locked and delivered. Um, and I'll just continually update those edit bins. So there can be a little bit of, you know, uh, tinkering at the very start to get that set up. Um, I actually have this um, saved. Um, I've sub clipped this out um, and saved it um, into a bin at this point. Um, like uh, ID board and leader. Um, and then I just paste that on to the, the head of the timeline, um, you know, when, you, when you're starting. Um, so if you want to do it a bit quicker, you can just do it that way um, and have it saved. And yeah, then you just continually update the metadata columns and, and hit deliver. And you don't have to jump into tools like Subcap or, or you know, God forbid, Photoshop or whatever else or Titler Plus um, to edit ID boards and, or tinker with it that way. It'll just auto update after you type it in the bin. Hunky dory. So... Thank you for watching everybody, especially a huge nod and thank you to uh, Patreon followers and YouTube uh, members who will already have uh, available to them uh, this ID board and leader as a download. If you liked the video and if you liked any of the other videos on the channel, uh, please consider sharing it around, telling your friends um, and sending it to anyone else in post um, and, and maybe it'll be able to help them out too.